Welcome back everyone, I am your host AR Comics, and today I'm going to be doing a video that a lot of you guys have been requesting for a while now. I'm going to be showing you how I clean and press books. Today I'm going to be cleaning and pressing ASM number 66. Right now as is, I'd probably put it around a 5. It's extremely dirty. It's got some color breaking spine ticks going down the side. The edges aren't that sharp. And there's just a few problems that I won't be able to fix. But I'm going to show you what I do to fix these books up. Now, by no means am I a professional. I'm sure there are a ton of better techniques out there. There's a lot of videos of people doing this type of stuff. But I'm going to be showing you what works for me. But before I get started on this, if you are new to the channel, I drop weekly comic book content that will keep you up to date on all of the brand new releases each and every week. So if that sounds like something you do not want to miss out on make sure you hit the subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified every time i drop new content you won't regret it and now without further ado let's get started on this cleaning all right so we're here and we're ready to start cleaning this book the first thing i do is i always make sure i put gloves on i know that's a hot topic in the community it's you use gloves you don't use gloves it's pretty much up to the whoever is cleaning the book personally i found i need to wear gloves because my hands get very sweaty and they're very oily. So I right off the bat realized it was coming off on the book. The next thing I grab, they're called Swispers. They're basically just makeup pad removers, but make sure they're oil free because some of these do have oil in them. Another must have for me is one of these little eraser pencils. Well, eraser things. The brand is Pentel Eraser. Just grab a pack of those. And another thing that's pretty new to me, this is an eraser pencil. Literally the tip is just an eraser. Check it out right there. You got this on the end too. And one more thing, I'm just gonna leave this off to the side here because I don't wanna get it on the book just yet. But it's like a little bean bag and it's basically just to give a nice buff and get any sort of excess dirt off the book right before you're ready to press it. So the first thing that I do is I make sure everything's you know good to go. I take one of these little Swisper pads and I just kind of identify everything on the book like I know where I'm going to begin but I just go lightly over it just to get all the excess dirt off of it first I go in nice little circular motions you know sometimes you change up directions just to get some of the extra dirt off but just nice little circles like that And obviously this book was extremely dirty, so I wouldn't be banking on this to get a lot of the excess dirt off. Now, if this was a modern book, I kind of only use one of these just because of the type of pages and covers that it has. So these work really well with modern books. So right off, you see we got a little bit of dirt, nothing too crazy off of it, but just a little bit of extra stuff. So next up, I'm gonna take my Pentel eraser pen and I basically just look at the entire book. It's obviously extremely dirty in all the different sections. So what I do is, is I kind of just work in one corner and just work my whole way up. So I'll take one of these and I'll just get going on the white parts. Use this little pencil, just go very lightly with it. You don't want to take any of the red and black lines off the actual page. Try to hit as much white as you possibly can. I know that sometimes you might hit it a little bit. You might see a little color rub off of it. That's okay though. Don't get too upset by that. Just try not to go crazy on it and keep doing it. And when you're doing this, make sure you go through every little spot, especially because if you clean everything, you're going to be able to tell the little spots that you did miss, but just be very thorough with this. And now, as I was saying with this, go very, very lightly over these areas. It's going to pull the color right off that black and make it nice and light. And you don't want that at all. See, as you can tell, it's a little bit of mark right there, but it's basically all just dirt. All right, and now that this whole bottom portion is done, we're gonna be moving on to this big section all right here. I'm gonna start down here first and just work my way up. And 
And now I did forget to mention, I do use a toothpick. Every once in a while you get a little piece that might just kind of just be like a little chunk. So just to tell if it is or isn't, just kind of lightly go over it just a little bit and you might be able to bring it up. So in this case, this doesn't look like it, it can be brought up. So that area, it's just kind of, it is what it is right now. As you can already tell, just doing this little tiny area as light as quick as I did, it already looks so much better than it did before. So now that I'm satisfied with this little area right here, I'm gonna move up to this little chunk before I start hitting up there. And make sure when you are using this pencil, you do it very lightly because you still have to treat it as a pencil. Anytime you dig a little bit into it, it's basically leaving an indentation into the page itself and you don't wanna tear through it. So now just looking at it, I'm very satisfied with these two areas, so I'm going to move up to this corner spot next. And when you're going along the edges like this, be very careful because every time you go outwards like that, if you're still too low bringing it back, you could hit the page really easily like that and you could either tear it or just bring it up because this is a Silver Age book. The pages are very brittle compared to some of these modern ones, so you just have to be careful with things like that happening. Periodically, once you see this start to get pretty dirty, you know, you've got a big pack of them. Don't be stingy with it. Just grab a fresh one and you'll be good to go when you got to brush it off again. All right, so now that I've hit this whole area too, I think it's all starting to look pretty good together. I'm going to move on to this little corner spot right here. It's definitely pretty bad. It looks like we've got... So it looks like dirt that probably could have been brought up with one of these pads, but it's not coming off with it. So we're going to have to try to maybe scrape that. This thing over here might be able to get it off as well. So we'll see how that comes out at the end. Cool. So I was actually able to get all that dirt off with my little pad right here. So even some of these spots right here, just go a little bit tougher on it if there is actual dirt on it and you can typically get most of it off and now for this top part this is probably for me right now where you could possibly do the most damage to this book because it's all these little dirt spots in between the black and it's already kind of light the colors are already coming up a little bit on the amazing part some of these black lines aren't as thick as they should be and it'll just really be easy to pull it off and it's still pretty dirty so let's see what i can do all right so now that this top portion is basically done do it right there it looks much better than it did this area is pretty tough to hit just because i didn't want to go too hard on the page and pull up any of this extra black lining right here the last part i'm going to hit on this front is right here on Mysterio's helmet. I'm probably just gonna give it a nice quick little go down with one of my pads again once I'm done, and then we can finally move on to the backside. All right, now that is the front of ASM 66. Look at that difference. Now let's move on to the back side and you guys are going to be horrified with this. Look how disgusting this is. So let's just jump into it. Same thing as before. I got all my tools still right here. Clean up, you know, if you gotta take a break, do your thing. But basically I start down and just, you know, work my way up. One thing I do try to do with these back pages is I will get the outsides first. And then I'll work kind of on the inside when some of these backs have boxes like this. 
I'll get everything and then I'll work on the boxes last. Just my personal preference, but you know, it's just what I do. Alright, now that is everything on the outsides. How much better does that alone look? So now that I've done that, I'm going to hit this little box and then I'm just going to kind of work my way in. There it is. There is the back of the book. Freshly cleaned. And now the final step that I do is I take this little thing. Like I said, this is just called a, let me get it correct, dry cleaning pad. It's just supposed to basically buff it out right before we put it in the presser. So you can twist it up a little bit and you see the little powder falls out. This is just supposed to help buff the page, make it look cleaner. So I go, first off, I go little circular motions, just like that. And once it's there, just kind of push it all up and out. And this will get all the remaining dirt and residue or whatever is left on this page. It's going to give it a nice little shine as well. Same thing, bring this down like this. Now we can flip it over to the front. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the front. Twist it up, let some of the powder drop out from it. Nice little circular motions. It's gonna get all the remaining dirt off, shine the page a bit. All right, so I'm just gonna put some finishing touches on the front and back cover, mainly just get all these last little powder marks off and any sort of stray fuzzes, and then we're just gonna get ready for the presser. All right, so here we are at the fun part. Cleaned up the workstation, got all the last bit of anything off the book, so it's all cleaned and ready to go. So now basically you look for what you're trying to fix. So right here we have some creases. Obviously we're not gonna be fixing these spine ticks, but looking at the rest of this cover, just trying to be a little careful with it, you definitely see some markings going down on it and some other little creases right here. Overall, the book honestly isn't that bad as far as creases go or waves. The back is pretty bad. We can fix that up right there. That's going along the sides. This area right here, we can see that there. And a little bit down at the bottom. So the back is a lot worse than the front. So what you look for next is for what I do and what I've been taught. So this whole thing, I've been talking to Comics for Cheap. He is who I've learned everything from so far. He is the go-to guy for cleaning and pressing and everything I've learned, I've learned through him. So I will tag him in the description. But as far as this goes, so because this is Silver Age, we're gonna be putting an 80 pound cardstock paper right in the front. And when you put that in there, make sure it's basically lined up right with the edge of the book. So we're gonna have that one right there. I'm gonna put that one in last. I just wanted to show what pretty much the process was. There's one that goes in the front and one goes in the back. But one thing that you always have to look for is the staples. So right there in the center, we're gonna look at what kind of staples are in there right now. They either usually 
dig in just like that, or they're usually pretty flush with each other and they're flat, kind of like this one. So we have a little of both going on right now. So what you do is, is you take a magazine board. I typically put glossy side in. This is gonna be a little bit of a weird one, just because the staples don't exactly line up, but you can kind of see how in the front one, let me try and get that a little bit closer for you. You see how the staples on one side. Well, we can't really do that for the bottom, so we're gonna be really careful with this one. We've got one magazine board there. And we've got the other one going right in. So when you do this, you see how one's still on that side. And now the other one is going to be right on the other side of it. And we do that because now the staple has something to basically press against. Now, if we didn't do that and we only put one in there and say we press this because, you know, we got to get all these creases and waves out. We got to fix some of these spine ticks if we can. If we press that with certain heat and enough pressure, that will go right through the book and there'll be a nice staple mark going on the other side. So what this is going to do is basically prevent that from happening. But, you know, you still have to be really careful with it as well. So we have that in the center. As I was talking about, now we put our 80 pound cardstock right in the front. Put that one right there. Same thing. Try and get it to line up as flush as you possibly can against the spine. And now when we go to the back, we're going to be doing the same exact thing. Now modern books and some other books, we do a totally different process. So I'll be doing that as well. But for the sake of this video, this is obviously a Silver Age book. And now we are good to go. Let's put it in the press machine. All right, so it's finally time to press the book. So this press machine that I have, I believe it's a nine by 12. It's a transfer crafts. I literally got it on Amazon. It was probably one of the cheapest ones on there. This one, when you open it, it goes sideways like this. I suggest getting one that opens up. It's a clamshell type and you can get bigger ones too. I think it's like 12 by 12 or 12 by 15. I definitely suggest getting one that size. So this is the press machine. And now the first thing you're going to want to do is open it up sideways. You take two magazine boards. So we have two right here. And before we set this down, make sure this surface area is clean. Make sure the bottom is clean. Make sure these magazine boards are clean. And I already did that all prior to starting this. So we're gonna set that down right there in the center. So put that down right there. And the next thing we do so we get our book and same thing. This is where you would inspect the book again. Make sure everything is good. There's no extra debris on it. Everything is lined up and flush on the edge. And now you set that on there. Try not to let anything move. And see, this is where having a clamshell would be a lot easier than the one that I have, or at least a bigger area. So put that down basically right in the center. And the final thing that we need, this came with the heat press itself. It's just like a heat transfer paper. I know they sell this. I'm not exactly sure what the name of it is, but I think when I opened it, it literally just said heat transfer paper. So we'll set that down right on top. And now I know this is where a lot of people do a lot of things different. I know some people use metal plates. Some people use a lot more magazine boards. And when a lot of other people do this, they turn it on, they put it on very high heat, they close it, they leave it in for about 10 or 15 minutes. They let the book cool and they flip and you know, they just restart the process. The way we're gonna be doing things today is this is how Comics for Cheap taught me because now we have less room for error. Because even if the book doesn't come out good, we can just redo it, but we won't actually be possibly destroying the book with this. So because this is a Silver Age book, we're gonna be going between 100 and about 45 to 153 degrees Fahrenheit. For this one, because the book is kind of more on the crease side it's got a little bit more waves we're going to be going with 148 for the first try and we're going to be leaving it in for about two and a half to three hours so let's let this heat up and we'll be right back okay so now that the heat press is heated up this is your final chance to inspect everything books in there and you're good to go looks good 
So now, like I said, we're heated up to about 148, 149 on this one. Don't worry about the time because as soon as we close this, so we take this, move it down, and as you can tell, it's just kind of lightly on there for right now. Then you just put a little bit more pressure Nothing too crazy, just so that it's kind of in place. You don't want to press too hard down on this book because you are going to mess it up. So just a little bit of pressure. And now that it's on and it's heated up, turn that off. You let it sit there for about two and a half to three hours, and we'll check back in. All right, the time has come. It's been about three hours, so let's see how the book came out. All right, so here it is, The Amazing Spider-Man. Put it in for about 149 degrees. As you can tell, we got the creases out from this top corner area right here, so that's real good. This other spot, it's a little bit tougher to tell right here, but the crease is gone. Moving down, and the book is looking great. Everything else came right up. So now you know what that means. We're gonna move it on to the back side. It's gonna be the exact same process. So let's see how it comes out and same thing, about three hours, and I'm gonna do it at the same temperature. All right, the book has officially been in for roughly three hours. Let's see how it turned out. And there is the back, let's see how it is. And there is the back of our ASM 66. Look at that. All the creases came out looking good. I'm very happy with how this came out. All those creases off the side. If we see these little marks still off to the side here, let's see, like right there. These were all color breaking spine ticks. So those were a little bit harder to get out. I did the best I could with those, but the spine itself was pretty much ripped from it. But yeah, there it is, ASM 66. So what'd you guys think about how the book came out? Honestly, I think it came out way better than I was anticipating. I got all the major creases out. It's not dirty anymore. There still is this little stain somewhere right around here, but there's nothing I could do about that. But like I was saying, everything I learned, I learned from Comics for Cheap. He's got an Instagram too. I'm gonna tag him down low in the description, so make sure you go check him out. But I do plan on incorporating this into my weekly routine of videos. Maybe every Tuesday, the date is still up in the air. I'm gonna figure that one out, but be on the look out for more cleaning and pressing videos so thank you for watching this video if you did enjoy it and you learned something from it make sure you hit that subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified every time i drop new content you won't regret it and i've got two more videos sitting off the side here with more of my comic book content click on one of those and i'll see you in the next one have a great day